Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Senior Center Conceptual Design Input Session. My name is Katie, I'm the COA Director and the Chair of the um, Senior Center Site Selection and Building Committee. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, hopefully everyone on Zoom can hear me uh, and see the shared screen. I cannot, from the Mondo pad, see any chat. Cannot hear, okay, all right, hang on, let me move it closer. Okay, is that, a is that a little bit better? Okay, sorry. I find the microphone so awkward. We'll get it into the right position. If at some point I shift during the presentation and you can't hear me anymore, just yell out mic and I'll try and move back again. So uh, before, we get, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to thank the members of the Senior Center Site Selection and Building Committee. You can see them here on the screen. They are a wonderfully talented and capable group of residents who each have uh, a tremendous skill set and talent to bring to this project and I am just very uh, thankful for all of them. A little bit about the format for today. The first thing we're gonna do is have a presentation. Uh, should be about 20 to 25 minutes uh, about aging and air and why we need a new senior center, the progress to date on the project, as well as what a new senior center could look like and how we'll fund it. If you could hold your questions till the end of the presentation, that would be great. Um, everyone should have a paper and pen in front of them. So uh, if you're like me and you forget your questions, you can jot them down and save them for the end. And then after that, we're gonna break up into small, uh, small groups, hopefully maybe the people at your table or around you, to discuss some questions. And then, um, then when we come back, We'll share, um, you can appoint someone in your group to share your responses. And then after that, after we have shared our small group responses, then I'll open it up to uh, a more general question and answer session. All right. Oh, hang on. Yes. There should be no sound, no sound for Zoom. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, let me. Uh, that I'm not sure. Is that better? Can you hear me on Zoom now? Hopefully so. Sorry, helps if I unmute myself. Okay, so for those of you um, on Zoom, hopefully you can hear me now, let me just repeat that. Today's format is going to follow a, a presentation followed um, by small group discussion and then we'll come back and share the results, uh, share people's responses from that small group discussion and then we'll open it up to broader question and answers. All right, so air like much of the country is aging. Currently 25% of Ayers residents are age 60 and older. And they are the fastest growing subset of our population. This population shift is expected to continue until 2060, so this is a long-term demographic shift. And you might not be able to read it, but this graph from uh, UMass Amherst shows that while population growth is expected to be to hover right around 20% in the upcoming years, the growth in the senior population is um, 182%. So the growth in the senior population is going to dramatically outpace the growth of the town. Um, so air is aging, and as a result, the Council on Aging needs a more suitable space to address the needs not only of our seniors today, but the surge of seniors that is coming. I see some uh, people here who have used the Senior Center and some new faces, so I thought I would just take um, a moment to talk a little bit more about what a Senior Center does. 
A thriving senior center helps seniors stay independent by providing a supportive community as they age in place. They offer programs like fitness classes, low-cost meals, um, socially and intellectually engaging programs that help avoid the perils of isolation and depression that we know create a lot of secondary health care costs. Uh, we offer health education programs, transportation for those who no longer drive to things like doctor's appointments, shopping, errands, social visits, as well as serving as a single hub for the many important social services that are relevant to older adults. Things like health, uh, health insurance counseling, free AARP tax aid, um, benefits counseling, all of those things that come with, um, that often come with being on a fixed income as we get older. And, and this isn't just something that we do because it's nice or it's fun. Uh, the research shows us that older adults who participate in senior pro center programs can learn to manage and delay the onset of chronic disease and experience measurable impacts, measurable improvements in their physical, social, emotional, mental, and economic well-being. So why do we here in AIR need a new senior center? Our current senior center is inadequate. We rent a 1,700 square foot space in the basement of the Housing Authority building on 18 Pond Street. Just to get a show of hands, how many people have been there before? About half of you, okay, great. I encourage the rest of you to come down and check it out. Uh, it's about, like I said, it's about 1,700 square feet. It's rented, it's not owned by the town of Ayr. It's hard to find, it's tucked in the, around the back around the backside in the basement. Um, there's not enough parking for even our current programs, let alone the growth that we would um, like to have. There's not enough programming space. We have two rooms right now to program, and it's just not possible to accommodate the range of programs that older adults need. Um, there just aren't enough hours in the day or, or rooms in the building. There's not enough office space. We currently have five staff members that share two offices. My office, I share with the van coordinator and the dining services coordinator, and the walls in my office don't go all the way up to the ceiling. And so uh, I can't have any confidential conversations in my office uh, without the lunch crew being able to hear and report back and give me their opinion on them. Um, so it really does get in the way of the ability for the staff to communicate as well as have a confidential conversation with an older adult. There's no commercial kitchen. We are, it's a lovely size kitchen, but it's not commercial, which means we can't get the kind of food service permit that allows us to um, cook food in the space. All we can do is what they call hot hold or cold hold, which means food has to come in at a temperature and stay that temperature. So we're bringing in catering. Uh, that is quite expensive. It's, the meals program is probably one of our most popular uh, programs right now, but it is expensive. Uh, with a commercial kitchen, we would be able to prepare our own meals for the daily meals program at a much lower cost. The building, the parking lot, the entryway, the building, the restrooms, none of it's ADA compliant. Uh, it's, often a tight squeeze for folks with walkers, let alone wheelchairs. You have to take turns kind of going in and out of certain spaces for people to pass by. The restrooms are not ADA compliant at all. Um, I have had people get stuck in the restroom and um, need assistance getting it out. Um, it was embarrassing for them, awkward for me. Um, people deserve to have a space that they can access and use in a dignified way. Uh, there's also, as I said, no space for um, confidential conversations. A modern senior center would address much of many of these concerns. It would have a variety of spaces for the whole range of exercise, social, wellness, and educational programs that are needed uh, in air. For example, I, I like to think about exercise as a great example. In the range of seniors, what what it means to be a senior in your 60s versus a senior in your 80s can be very different. And so, for example, if uh, younger seniors or more able-bodied seniors of any age would like to have a, uh, a Zumba class, a line dancing class, belly dancing, hip hop, whatever it is, they need a large open space with which to do that in. We also need to be able to offer um, 
chair ex chair based exercise or parkinson specific fitness classes that target mobility and flexibility for that group as well as folks who want to have a more specific class such as um, strengthening their knees and their lower body before they have surgery right instead of having to go to all that what do they call that the pre-physical therapy but there's just not enough hours in the day so we need to be able to run and you know people don't want to exercise at noon or 12 30 right after they've eaten so we need to have enough spaces to offer a variety of programs and that's just a fitness example we could do that example over and over again with all the different categories of activities uh, a modern senior center would have a commercial kitchen for daily meal for our daily meals, an outdoor space for gathering, walking, gardening, and fitness, confidential office space that allows for greater productivity among the staff, uh, consultation with older adults about matters that may be sensitive. There'd be adequate parking for everyone and accessibility for all. So why should we invest in a senior center? And anytime you're talking about building a building, it's an investment, right? So there are a number of reasons. Um, the first is that caring for those who built our town, it's, it's the right thing to do. If you look at those who created and shaped our town into the place that we love today, many times there's an older adult at the heart of that. If you look at our town boards and committees, most if not all of them have older adults on them. They are responsible for many of the traditions and celebrations that we enjoy here in town and caring and providing for their needs is just the right thing to do. The research shows us that senior centers can help older adults stay healthy and independent, that as a result of their participation in fitness, nutrition, and health education programming, as well as the social support system that's formed at a senior center, those older adults do a better job at managing their chronic health conditions and have a higher quality of life than those who don't use senior centers. There's some large um, national Medicare uh, data that says that chronic care management programs and the elements of a successful chronic care management program are things like fitness, nutrition, and health education that are what we're offering at a senior center. Chronic care management programs result in 5% fewer hospitalizations and 2.5% fewer ER visits, and those are important outcomes. We've been doing the best that we can in the space that we've had, but there's so much more that we can do. And data from recently built senior centers indicates an increase in participation by two to three times. So new senior centers that open double or triple their utilization within the first year. And so that to me is evidence that there's a need beyond what we have. We're doing good things now, but there is a need beyond what we have. Once we can offer the programs and services in an appropriate building, the people will come in and use them. Now we know that it's good for seniors, but it's also a, sen a thriving senior center is good for our town as a whole. Uh, healthy seniors that are living independently in their homes for longer, they are an advantage to our town's tax base and they help create the kind of diversity that we want to see in town. It can also be a help to, a help help to the community by being a heating or cooling center. Many of us in town don't have central AC or can't afford to heat our homes as um, warmly as we would like to, uh, and temperatures you know, can, can get hot and cold, so it's nice to have it as a heating and cooling center. The senior cent a new senior center could work as a functional need shelter. As many of, your, of you are aware, we have, uh, in the case of an emergency, the high school is our shelter. But there are sets of certain individuals that are not appropriate for a large shelter, be it they have special dietary, I'm sorry, special dietary needs or due to mobility constraints, they can't navigate the large school. And so it's a possibility for the senior center to be a what they call a functional needs shelter for a small subset of our residents. While, this, while this proposed senior center would be a standalone senior center during the day, it also has the potential to be a valuable community resource. Boards and committees may choose to use the building after, um, after hours, as well as community, community groups could rent the space to expand on all that we have to offer here in town. The town of Ayer is proud in the, of the way that it invests in its people and facilities, and now it's time to in, invest in the seniors. Do you have
give you a little bit of an overview of the progress to date. Building a new senior center has been a priority in AIR for many years. It dates all the way back to the original feasibility study in um, 2019 and 2020. Uh, the town engaged an architect, looked at available land, looked at some plans, um, and that effort unfortunately ended with town meeting voting down the West Main Street site. That was right about the time that COVID began, and understandably, um, people's priorities were elsewhere. So a few years later, a working group was appointed and began to look again at potential sites for the senior center. And then uh, an opportunity to partner with Parks and Rec for a community center grew from that. Uh, and unfortunately, that effort as well ended with Parks and Rec backing out of the Peroni Park site. Now, as soon as the select board dissolved that committee, they reappointed the current committee, the Senior Center Site Selection and Building Committee. And this group has been working diligently and methodically for the past year to narrow down the 54 town-owned sites. We decided to focus first on town-owned land and diligently looked at them and narrowed them down from 54 to 20, 11, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And decided on, and I should say during that time, we also issued an RFP, a request for private landowners who might be interested in selling to the town. That was the second RFP for private land um, across this span. Uh, and both times there were no um, landowners who were interested in selling land to the town. So we continued to focus on town owned sites and decided on Bishop Road. So the Bishop Road site as the proposed new senior center site will be conveniently located near downtown on Bishop Road. Um, for those of you who uh, aren't aware, Bishop Road is off of Park Street, kind of halfway between the fire station and Tiny's, if that makes sense. It's the second street on the left. It's about a half mile from Park Street. Here's a different view. You can see sort of Bishop Road going across the top here. This is St. Mary's Cemetery. And then um, this piece of land here is part of a larger uh, DPW operated parcel at 76 acres. And the DPW has been kind enough to um, allow us to parcel off three acres in the northeast corner uh, as a site for a proposed senior center. So why did we choose Bishop Road? There, we thought there were many advantages, the committee thought there were many advantages, including it's a flexible lot size out there as being a sub parcel of the 76 acres. It's a flexible lot being next to additional town owned land means that we have the opportunity for expansion in, for the senior center or other community resources should that be desired in the future. It's an open site for construction. There would be no expensive staging, um, off-site staging of equipment or materials. It could all be done right there. And uh, there's not very much traffic that goes down that road, and so the building process would not be disruptive to um, most people in town. Uh, despite it being sort of on its own out there on Bishop Road, it's still quite close to downtown. It's only a half mile from Park Street. And it has the advantage of that whole larger piece of land out there is adjacent to the Oxbow Refuge, which is just a beautiful area and creates a lot of opportunities for um, nearby and accessible recreation near the senior center. There are, of course, uh, due diligence things being done at the site right now, um, including utilities cost estimation that is underway. There are no utilities on Bishop Road, and so water, electric um, will need to be um, brought in. There are habitat assessments underway for ACEC and rare species impact. The phase one environmental study is also underway. And we've worked with Mass Development to discuss the uh, moving of the gate. So Bishop Road is the road that is sometimes closed, has the gate. We had a couple of successful meetings with them. They are in agreement to move the gate so um, that that piece of land will be accessible year round. So now this is the fun part. What would it look like? Uh, so you can see here some exterior renderings, it would, um, and as well as an interior one. Um, 
it would be, we've proposed a 14,000 square foot building on two levels that we really think is going to um, meet the current and future needs of the older adults in, here in town. All right, so I apologize for some of you in the back. This might be really hard to see, and I was hoping that my laser pointer would work, but doesn't work. And oh, you guys have in your handout, you have the floor plan, so you can look at that as well there. So um, the top of the screen here, um, and Bonnie, can you move? I don't know if it will show on mine or yours for the cursor to go along with it. Might be mine. Um, so this at the top of the screen here is the front of the parking lot. And as you enter into the building off to the left, you see um, a cafe and a gathering area. This will be a set of tables and chairs with a coffee bar that will have complimentary coffee and pastries in it. This is sort of a welcoming, louder, boisterous, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Meeting up with people before you, either before you go on to other programs or just as a place to meet up because, you know, sometimes we don't feel like tidying up to have people over. Maybe you just want to meet at the senior center. So um, that space is here. Then as you progress sort of down and back towards the back of the building, you get progressively quieter. So towards this back corner here, you have upholstered furniture. There is a see-through fireplace here. This is for smaller group conversations, one-on-one -on -one quiet conversation. And by the time you come around the backside here of the see-through fireplace, now you're in a quiet reflection space. There'll be some bookcases, couches, things like that for quiet reflection and ring. Oh, do I have a Vanna White? Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. I appreciate that. So now you'll be back. Yes. So in addition to the um, generous and welcoming um, reception areas, there's a, an activity room in the front of the building. That one it will be um, of ample size for um, gatherings like arts and crafts, current events, um, yoga, speakers, anything that you could do. The point of most of these rooms is to keep them flexible and multi-use because what's popular right now and what's popular three or four years from now, that can change and that can evolve. And so the idea is that these spaces are flexible and able to meet the needs of seniors and the subgroups of seniors that will be using the building. When you enter off to the right-hand side, you'll see the staff area. So there are two, um, no, uh, the purple part, yep, top left, but yep, that part there. So um, that staff area, you have two greeters there who can um, make people feel welcome as they come in, and that's where you sign in using the My Senior Center software. It will also include three staff offices with doors and walls that go all the way to the ceiling that will allow for Product, high, better productivity among staff and collaboration, as well as private conversations um, with the outreach coordinator, town social worker, um, or the director myself. It also includes some cubby spaces for the staff members that don't need um, privacy, so that's an efficient use of space, uh, as well as the copier and office equipment and things like that. So then, um, Right when you come in the door to off to the other side are uh, handicap or ADA compliant restrooms. Um, there are two multi-stall restrooms off to the left hand side. And then to the right hand side is what we call a companion restroom. You might also hear them called as family restrooms. Uh, oftentimes we have couples that come in to use the senior center, but one of them may need some assistance in the restroom. So if you only have single gender restrooms, it can make it awkward um, to be there supporting your spouse. So we have companion restrooms that um, two people can go in. Uh, in addition, we have, let's see, um, we have an elevator that goes up to the second floor, as well as senior-friendly staircase, kind of right when you come in. Now, directly opposite the front door is our large multi-purpose room. And that one is going to be wonderful. It will have room to seat 150 people for special events. That's just going to be a tremendous resource for holidays, for larger gatherings, musical events, things that will draw a big crowd. 
Now, we won't have 150 people for lunch every single day, so this room has a partition that goes down, uh, it's a two-third, one-third split, that will allow us to set up for lunch for 40 to 50 people for the daily lunch program uh, that we anticipate having going forward. And then on the other side of the partition, we can do our large group fitness classes. Off of the smaller side is the commercial kitchen with plenty of pantry and storage space. And outdoors, there are tremendous amount of amenities, including a patio in the front that you can use um, to meet up with people before you go in. You can use it while you're waiting for a ride from the COA van, or if you have a friend who's parked in the back of the parking lot, you wanna wait for them to come pick you up. Uh, as well as a large patio space off of the, the multi-purpose room. Additionally, the outside amenities include a six foot wide, what, oops, sorry. Oh, sorry, where did I go? Oops, I don't, uh, can I go? I don't know how to go back. Sorry about that. So uh, the outside amenities in addition to the patio include a six foot wide covered walking track around the building, which is going to be such an asset for um, older adults who are perhaps recovering from a surgery or just entering into the phase of their life where they would like to get more active walking. They're not quite ready for some of our wonderful trail systems in town, but they can work up to walking longer distances while in the relative sort of emotional safety of being very close to the building. Uh, additionally, on the outside uh, of the building is a medical equipment room. That's one thing I get calls every single week for people looking to borrow a wheelchair, a walker, a potty chair, a shower chair, um, to help them through just temporarily after a surgery. And we just don't have space to store those things and they can be very uh, expensive. And so um, in cooperation with the Disabilities Commission, we'd like to have an, outside, an accessible from the outside medical equipment room. That way, if you need to borrow something, you don't have to drag it through the lunchroom in the coffee space. You can just pull your car around, pick up what you need and head out. Um, you'll see in the site plan in just a few minutes that we're proposing two pickleball courts as well. Um, and those are would be wonderful spaces, obviously, for pickleball because that's very popular. But when the weather is nice, we have a Tai Chi class and a yoga class that like to meet outside. And those courts would obviously be a great space to do that as well. So if you want to go upstairs, you have the option of using the elevator, of course, or using the senior friendly staircase. And by senior friendly, I mean the riser, the risers are six inch risers as opposed to seven, eight, nine inches you see in standard home construction. For those of you who live in historic homes, you might even have a 10 inch riser. That's a big step up and can be very hard on the joints, in the knees and the hips. But with a six inch riser, it's a very small rise. We went to visit um, one of this architect's buildings uh, elsewhere in Massachusetts and had some of the seniors who don't like steps or say that they can't use steps. We had them try it and they made it up. So um, they are really, it's amazing what just a couple of inches of difference can do in functional abilities. So that's, that's huge. So once you're upstairs, directly ahead of you is a space for cards and games. And I know you can't see it from here, but there's two sort of uh, dotted line boxes. And that's the space that would be needed for two billiards tables, should we choose to go that way, um, should the citizens choose to go that way. Um, otherwise, we can put an assortment of card and game tables in that space. Uh, if you turn to the right, once you come up the stairs, you will see a multi-purpose activity room as well as a fitness room that has a variety of um, cardiovascular and strength equipment in it. That's something that a lot of people are excited about. Uh, over to the left, when you come up the stairs to the left, you have another set of restrooms that are, of course, ADA compliant and a companion restroom. The companion restroom upstairs has a shower in it, um, which can be used if the um, senior center was used as a functional needs shelter. Um, two more rooms to go. One is the wellness uh, room, which is the sort of orange space off to the very end. And that is a private space for um, 
consultation upstairs. We could use it for a variety of things. The public health nurse, manicures, pedicures, podiatry, massage, Reiki, Shine Medicare counseling, AARP tax, um, tax aid, and any time um, just people want to have a private or confidential meeting, that space will be, will be fantastic. Uh, last but not least, there is one more activity room up there um, that can be a secondary exercise room for some of those smaller classes that I was talking about, as well as it can be subdivided as well for smaller groups of, let's say, five to seven um, or ten individuals, like a, a book club or a current events or something that's very specific that you would just want a small, more intimate gathering in. Uh, if, you'll, if you notice, all of the activity, all of the program spaces have a sink in them, which allows them to be used for a variety of purposes over time if there's water in them. And there's not only is there cabinetry, thank you, Vanna, um, not only is there cabinetry in there, but there's also a walk-in closet in each and every, um, each and every activity space to ensure, because that's something we all need more of is storage, right? But we want to be able to ensure that each of the programs that meets in those spaces has space to store the items that they need for their program, be it a um, watercolor class, a weight loss group, you know, anything, that a current events group, whatever supplies they need, they'll have space to store it there. This... Um, this is more of a site plan. You can see sort of at the top is Bishop Road here. It will have ample parking uh, that is directional traffic. So when you come in, you can pull up to the building and let your passenger out on the correct side of the road, making it easy and safe. Uh, there are 92 parkings, 92 regular parking spots in this space and um, 11 ADA spots, which means that um, there will be n no parking snafus like we currently have where people have to park around the grass, up behind the trees, down at Peroni Park and walk all around. There'll be ample parking for people. Uh, it won't be a deterrent to using the um, to using the senior center. And this one you can see the pickleball courts and um, kind of see the walking track around the, the covered sidewalk around the building. All right. So this is the part that everyone is questions about how much is this going to cost? So the preliminary cost, total project cost is 16.6 million. That includes the cost to build the building, the site work needed to build the building, soft costs. Soft costs are things like engineering fees, permitting, all of those, including fixtures, finishes, furniture, all of those things, um, as well as the cost of bringing utilities to Bishop Road. So. 16.6, it's a big number, municipal building projects, because we are required to um, work within the prevailing wage system, are always going to be more expensive than if you or I tried to build it in our backyard. Um, but the key point here is, what does it mean for you? And we estimate that it will be an average of $250 a year on the average tax bill. There's a lot of different ways that this money could be um, borrowed and set up, but the $250 is based on a 30-year uh, descending bond. Uh, so it will start at 250 and it will drop a couple of uh, dollars each year as the, as the bond goes on. Um, the average tax assessed value in town is 486,000, I believe. So if you're, and, and this is not, your realtor.com or your Zillow like listing price, what you could sell it for. This is your tax assessed value, what you're paying taxes on. So if your home is um, assessed at a lower value than that, then it would be a smaller increase on your tax bill. If your house is assessed at a higher value, it would be um, more. It's important to point out when looking at the cost that utilizing town-owned land has saved um, at least a million dollars. Uh, as we've seen recent land purchases in town, uh, land is getting expensive. So by utilizing town-owned land, uh, we believe that we have saved the project at least a million dollars. And it's important to point out that no local tax dollars have been used to date for the project. Uh, everything that we've done so far, um, the working with the architect, the land search, and the site 
site due diligence to date has been um, util has been utilizing the three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that we have in UDAG, ARPA, and State Housing Choice grant funds. Mm -hmm. While that number is big, I believe that there is a tremendous amount of value um, for older adults and for the rest of the town. And every year that we wait just adds to the building cost. On the upside, there are a lot of factors that could reduce that total expense. Things like utilities rebates. We are just not far enough down the process to see if um, it's possible that we could get some rebates on the utility costs. There are state and federal grants available for building senior centers. We are a um, housing choice community, and there's a second round of funding from what we currently have that would um, allow us to seek a higher level of funding for the next phase of the project. Uh, there are funds available from um, Dan Cena and Jamie Eldridge um, that we've already spoken with them about that possibility for our project. There's of course foundation grants, business contributions, and personal donations. Uh, AIR is a, a tight-knit community that takes care of its own and I just feel certain that as we get further into the process um, that there will be businesses and individuals that will step forward to contribute as well as the Friends of the AIR Senior Center and if you, uh, I think everyone has a um, one of their enrollment forms. They are a new fundraising group that has uh, just gotten started and with the goal of supporting senior center programs and the building project. So in terms of the process from here on out, we are currently in step number one, the feasibility study, doing site due diligence, and gathering public input. And that will continue throughout the fall. Um, we, the next phase would be moving on to the next level of design of, of drawings and documents, the design documents. And that will hopefully take us to a special town meeting in uh, February sometime, maybe early March, but February. Um, and if, if the town decides that they would like this, if that is successful at town meeting and the election that would follow, that would allow us to start in uh, through the bidding and final construction drawing phase and beginning construction potentially as early as fall of 2025. And then those of a building of that size would take a little over a year to build. So we have the potential to have a grand opening towards the end of 2026. So that would be very exciting. All right, so that concludes my presentation. What I was hoping we could do now is break up into some smaller groups. Um, I think some of you are sitting at tables. If you could turn to the two or three people next to you. You have a handout on, um, on the table here that has a set of questions. I was hoping maybe we could take 10 minutes to discuss those and then come back and, dis and share some of our responses as this is a public input session. Um, so the things I would like you to think about that are also printed on your sheet are how important is a modern senior center to you? And how likely are you to use a new center? The second question is what building feature is most important to you in a new senior center? Third, what program? So the first one is building feature and then the second one is program, like what kind of programs or, or activities would be most important to you? And then finally, would you vote yes for this at town meeting? Why or why not? So if you guys can turn to your neighbors and chat, that'd be great. All right, if everyone can come back together in the larger group, we can share some of our, you can stay sitting where you are. Um, we can start to discuss some of our All right, how about, so what I was thinking we could do is, um, what I was thinking we could do is kind of go around for each of the questions. So maybe, uh, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six groups, okay. So for the six groups, maybe we can start here in the front right. Um, we'll go through for each question. 
if, if you could each appoint someone to be your spokesperson, that'd be great. All right. Who is the spokesperson for this group right here? Okay. Oh no. Okay. Okay. All right. So then I, should I go on to the next group then or? Okay. All right. So how about the group behind? Um, what did you guys think was the, how important is a modern senior center to you and how likely are you to use a new senior center? Answer the first three questions first, and then we'll come back to. So hold that one because I can't. I do have a great explanation for that one. All right, um, and then um, sh I'll, I'll save at. The, should I save at the end for just a general straw poll for whether you would vote for this? That would feel less on the spot, probably, right? Okay. Um, so what about the group behind that one? Okay. There was a discussion in terms of how important is the senior center. And people felt it was fairly important, and we need one. Um, in some cases, um, they're not very positive about the current senior center um, because it's lack of parking and it's small, and some feel it has a little bit of a nursing home quality. Um, but there's great possibilities of what we could do. There was a question about why do we need a library at the senior center? I mentioned that that was basically shelved with a few books on it as part of the seating area. It wasn't really a formal library. Um, in terms of what the features they liked the best, uh, it was uh, exercise areas, pickleball courts, and the walking track. Um, what programs are most important to you? It was places to eat. Uh, educational programs, cultural programs, and outings. Great. That's a great feedback. Okay. Uh, let's <laughs> go up to this group here. So how important um, is a new senior center? I think for our table, um, it's very, it's currently used a lot, so it's very important. Um, and it will be more likely to be used um, moving into the future. Um, what building feature is most important? Um, parking, you know, um, over and over again. Um, I think currently the lack of parking um, is, is very problematic. Um, and um, another uh, important feature is um, the kitchen, having um, uh, a kitchen and a, and a chef to um, create meals daily. Um, I think, uh, actually I'll get to the concerns at the end. Um, what program is most important? Um, crafts and having a person um, participating and showing 
um, how to do those crafts is very important. Dancing came up. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Bingo came up. Um, entertainment, so that activity room to provide uh, multiple forms of entertainment, whether it be uh, music, movies, um, some exercise that, that came up. Um, filming, just keep, <laughs> if I miss something. <laughs> I, I think some concerns came up. I think Barbara uh, has a quote that uh, Katie, um, we don't need it to be a Taj Mahal, um, meaning I think it, you know, uh, the design may be a little um, too much, I think, uh, for the current uh, use. Um, and then um, some other concerns was uh, price and, and possibly escalation of uh, price going forward. The bathrooms, maybe you can find kind of like how it's situated on the first floor and the second floor. If you'll ask that question, I do have an answer for that. Right? When we come back around to the questions, I think that would be great. Thank you. Very, fairly important to have one. Uh, 
activity rooms, possibility for games, lectures, all that, Ex exercise good. Um, big question, I think, just to add in, would be the cost and is the building potentially too big? But then we were wondering, is there a way to incorporate uh, broader community center activities in this that would include other ages so that there could be intergenerational crossover on occasion? And if it incorporated something like that, that might make the size of this building more likely to pass at town meeting if it had expanded usage. So did you guys have another group or back there, or is that the last group? Okay. So um, I'm going to segue into the questions by answering that one first. Um, so a modern senior center includes intergenerational activities. If there is space and um, space and the facility to offer those. Um, other senior centers that I've worked in used um, early release days to do intergenerational programming. Um, and those are, it's apparent that I feel like the early release days multiply every year. Um, so there's a lot of really great opportunities within the framework of a senior center in order to have intergenerational programming. Um, the charge of this committee was to build a standalone senior center, the charge by the select board. Um, it would be, it's not my call to make um, what the community would do with it outside of the senior center hours, but I would say as, just speaking as the senior center director at the moment, um, I think it would be a wonderful resource to have boards and committees or community groups have access to those rooms outside of that time. I don't think it can be a community center, like a drop-in. It would have to be facilitated and supervised by specific groups in that time. But that's certainly an operational thing that I think can be worked out um, at the larger town level. That's a great question. Okay, so this group here had a question to um, what was the question? The bathrooms. Okay, so let me go back here. So to, to answer that question, so as you can see in the downstairs, the, the darker blue, that's the, the restrooms, um, the building is oriented on the site by the architect so that the rear of the building, the part at the, bro the bottom where the large multi-purpose room is and the patios, that's south facing to take advantage of all the light in the building. And so the restrooms are um, on the first floor placed in the center of the building, obviously, to allow public spaces to have the most natural light and the best exposure. And then if you look at the upstairs one, you're, you're correct. Those restrooms are not right on top of the ones downstairs. But again, there is um, plumbing in each of the rooms for sinks um, to allow for multi-purpose use. If you have arts and crafts classes, health-related activities, nutrition-related activities, uh, people need to be able to wash their hands or access the water for crafts. So there is plumbing going throughout the building. Um, but again, it's... Um, oriented so that the restrooms are not taking up any of that lovely south-facing natural light real estate. We want our activity and program rooms to have the best um, exterior vantage points and to take advantage of the light. One of the things I was most impressed about, um, our, the committee went to visit several of this architect's buildings um, throughout the state. and. One of the things that we remarked on, and we took a van full of seniors as well out to visit one of the communities, was the tremendous use of natural light and the, the way the building was sited on the lot really made it a warm, welcoming, light-filled place to be. And so I think that was um, the main motivation for putting the restrooms in the locations that they're in. So there was a, mm, does that answer your question? 
there's a, do you guys have a question as well? I Um, so I would anticipate um, needing probably one more full-time employee. I'm blessed to have a great staff right now. And we do fund a full-time dining coordinator at, at the time at, currently. And so um, maybe they would need a couple of more hours, but our department already has a sizable food budget and a dining coordinator. Um, I don't know about a chef. How about just like someone really good in the kitchen? Um, but um, there's a lot of options for that. So that is already in um, our departmental budget. Uh, the one staff member I would like to add is a program coordinator because I function as both the program coordinator and the COA director right now, um, but in a new building, it, could be its own full-time task. As someone who used to be a full-time program coordinator, I can tell you um, that is definitely an asset in the new building. I have one more question. Sure. Uh, there's probably some people in town who are having a lot of trouble paying the taxes now. Is there some way other than the government to help these individuals with this problem? That's a really good question. Um, Oh, so the question was, um, there are people, there are probably people in town who are struggling to pay their taxes right now, and is that there anything that we could do to help people um, with this cost? So um, I, will, I will suggest the, f the first thing is that the Town of Air has a senior tax work-off program, which allows older adults, anyone 60 or older, to um, work for the Town of Air um, up to two, I think 125 hours a year for a total tax credit of $2,000. Uh, I know the town of Air does not have all of those slots filled. We currently set aside a, a, a chunk of money for senior tax work off people and they, not all of those slots are filled. Um, I have several of them at the senior center and I love their assistance, love their help. I could always use more. Uh, if anyone's interested. And so that would be one opportunity. And we do allow a proxy system. So if um, you have a neighbor, for example, who's an older adult and you wanted to work their hours for them um, on their behalf as a proxy, you can do that. Um, beyond that, I would need to probably do some more research and look into that. But that's a great question. Right, so the town of Air is blessed to have a split tax base, and um, that's part of the reason that we're able to provide such a quality building at this cost is because businesses in town will be sharing the cost of that as well. So I'll have to ask Barbara the exact specific details of that, but um, that does reflect that, yes, to the best of my understanding. Okay, here's a question here. Okay. Just to make a hearing question, uh, the current car department, at least in the past, has had a problem with flooding uh, during uh, bad storms. The height of the media and the uh, Certainly, the city experienced a lot of stuff that was had to do with floods. That road is sometimes closed because of flood conditions. I suspect that probably that would go. There should be a lot of look at looking at uh, flood conditions on the other site of the access roads and analyzing that at the same margin of risk that closes. Not just for a hundred-year storm, maybe the environment storms. 
That's a great question, and the question was about flooding in the area, and um, the that you're you're right. Bishop Road does have a gate that closes due to flooding. The flooding is much further down the road. You have to go down and turn left um, down where the river and the overpass is. Um, the current parcel that we're looking at is not in a floodplain, not even near a floodplain. Um, so. Uh, and I think a lot of those maps have, are being update or ha updated or have been updated, and it's still not anywhere near a floodplain. So I do think the relative risk of that is, is very low. But that's a great question. Well, we have to look at it. We have to look at it. Oh. Yes, yes, there's a lot of um, assessment and site due diligence going on. We, we definitely are looking at it, but based on the maps that we have right now. Yep. Agreed, absolutely, yep. And we are doing um, all of the work to ensure that that will be the case. Thank you, that's a great question. Um, considering the location is near Shirley and also Bevins residence, and considering that, um, from my understanding, that they would be allowed to use, seem to be allowed to use the sector, could we include that when we approach them to include both families, the families, those communities, like, to help fund this and have open so that's a two-part two question. Um, first, um, about them using the center. Um, nearly every senior center is open to um, not only re their current residents, but residents of surrounding towns. That is a long-standing tradition. Um, each center has different rules about how they do that. Um, but that is a very common practice. Um, our seniors go to Shirley for some of their events. They go to Westford. They go to Littleton. Um, senior centers are funded by a combination of state and local dollars. And so there's, we are always encouraging people to find the programs and services that they like at the, all, not all, I mean, of course, we would love it if it was always at our center. But um, it's important socially as well, because as we get older, our friend and our friends and social circle can shrink due to death, due to moving to other towns to be near adult children, um, just due to changing um, capabilities. And so it's important to always be mixing people up and making um, new friends as you go along. So I think that socialization amongst towns is very important. Um, in terms of a formal collaboration, um, there is, n I'm not gonna say it's not possible, but um, there is no precedent in the state of Massachusetts for a regionalized um, senior center because each and every um, town sort of has its own personality and its own culture that they like to cultivate. Um, we are required um, by the Older Americans Act for each town to have a council on aging. Doesn't mean they have to have a senior center, but they have to have a council on aging. So they end up having people that they are often paying in that role. And so it creates, and without that, you don't get the state dollars. So it creates, um, it creates a complication of how you would work the staff, how you would work the programs, how you'd work that. Um, I think that certainly it's certainly an option. It's not something that I think is necessarily necessary in a formal agreement. Yes, I have a question about the activities there. Because of the size of the building and what I'd be adding on more activity for people, would that also include that you would be hiring people from those different positions that you know? Um, so so the question was, if you're gonna be offering more programs and services, will you be hiring more people to do those? And so um, I think a healthy senior center works with a mix of staff and volunteers because peer-led engagement often is uh, more authentic. It means more. Um, it gives people a sense of purpose. So utilizing, um, like for example, right now, um, we have our movie program, our tea um, group, our conversation group, our bingo group, um, those are all peer-led programs. Um, so I anticipate that in a new space, I did say I think we'll need a program coordinator. 
but between that program coordinator um, and the peer facilitated programs, I think that would be all that's necessary. Yeah, so the, um, I'm just gonna point that way. So the, so the question was, um, I didn't explain about how the first floor and the second floor interact. And so the large multi-purpose room has a um, vaulted ceiling. And so um, that large room on the, if you're looking at the floor plan, the bottom edge of it um, is a single story and it vaults up towards, oh, I have a new Vanna White, thank you. It vaults up towards, the, yeah, towards that where Mary Ellen is pointing. So that by the time you're up to where that room connects to the rest of the building, it is two stories high. And the advantage of that is obviously the spaciousness, there's um, a lot of light that comes in, it makes that room um, seem large, it allows us to have a movie screen that comes down for um, great audio and visual presentations, movies, things like that. Um, as well as it creates um, an interaction between programs that are going on. So let's say you are climbing the stairs and you need to take a break and stop for a second. There's a, a bench on the landing and then there's a set of windows there um, that line up with the bench that look down into the building, into the multi-purpose room. Or if you're in either of those um, I'm gonna call them the back rooms, the fitness equipment room or the dividable room upstairs. Um, those have windows that look down into the multi-purpose room. So it really helps to create a sense of connectivity because sometimes we see a new program going on and we're not sure if it's something we would enjoy. Um, so there are places to observe um, before we make a decision about you know whether we wanna participate. So thank you, that's a great point. Yes. There was a question about the library. Oh yes, thank you. The li the, the question about the library. So um, it's a the the room is labeled library by the architect. It's not an official library. The town of Air already has a library. Uh, the idea is that it's supposed to be a quiet space that one can read a book. There will be bookshelves in there. Um, we have a selection of books right now, but we hope to have more. Uh, I did talk with um, Luke, the director of the library, and he said he'd be happy to help us um, with that collection. Um, so the idea is less about it being a library that is check-in, check-out book. Um, but more um, of a quiet um, space where you can come read, read the paper, have a cup of coffee, um, sit on a nice upholstered piece of furniture. So thank you. So just a question about the debt exclusion that you would be asking for at town meeting. And this is just a clarification. So does that get voted on just a town meeting or does that have to go to a ballot? It has both, so it would be uh, by a two-thirds majority at town meeting and then a 50% majority at the ballot. Absolutely, and um, so the question was, um, the town is in need of spaces similar to this one without the level of echo that this room has. Uh, I agree with that. And so any of the spaces, but particularly the large multi-purpose room, but any of the spaces could be available for boards, committees, public hearings. And one of the neat things about um, this architect and part of the reason we chose them is that they are the preeminent architect for senior centers here in the state of Massachusetts and they've built a lot across the country as well. They design features, um, just little details that are um, really friendly to older adults and hearing in particular the way the ceiling is structured, the way the walls and the flooring are done are all designed to um, promote good hearing and to sort of minimize the background noise that makes it difficult for 
older adults, but really anyone to hear and enjoy a program. Of course, in a, a modern building with a modern AV system, that um, certainly makes it easier. Uh, one of the features of the large multi-purpose room is it will have a hearing loop in it. And so for those that aren't familiar, it is, um, there's both um, a coiled version that goes under the floor and a Bluetooth version, but it allows if you have um, the majority of modern hearing aids now have a setting on them that you can tune into a particular frequency. So when I'm speaking into this microphone, um, it will be coming out of the speakers, but it will also be coming right into your hearing aid. So there's, um, so it makes it very easy for folks that are having difficulty hearing to participate in senior center programs, which is very, very welcoming. Um. Yes, so um, so the reason that it is a two-story building is um, due to the um, number of activity rooms that we have and the overall size. So when we first started this process, you know, we were discussing whether we wanted it on a single floor or double floors or two floors, and by consolidating the building onto two floors, it makes it so that you never really have to walk that far, which might seem counterintuitive at first. Because if you have a large, sprawling building that has long corridors in this way and that way, it can be daunting if you're using a walker or a wheelchair to go from the entrance all the way down to the last hallway, the last classroom on the left. Whereas the current design basically has four quadrants, four spaces off of the stairs in the elevator. And so you never really have very far to go to get to the program that you would like to go to. Sure, in the new space, I would anticipate we will have additional hours, evening hours, um, probably one or two days a week. As with all things, you have to ramp up to that. Um, that would be a great opportunity to survey folks as we're opening up to see um, if there are additional hours that people desire. Um, but I would for sure anticipate one, if not two, um, evenings a week. That's a great question. So the question was about the operating budget. And that's something that I've sat down um, right now. You're correct. I don't have a lot of facilities related costs. Um, so I sat down with Chuck, our facilities director, and he took a look at the um, other buildings we have in town and the size. And um, we worked out all of the different fees for maintaining all of the different pieces of the building. Um, and that worked out to right about $90,000 a year. Um, that includes elevator maintenance, HVAC maintenance, all those sorts of things. Um, and then I would want to add on that additional staff member. So if I, and it's an estimate right now, and I'm working with the architect to um, look at their two buildings that they have built just recently to get an estimate on their operating costs. So again, just an estimate, um, I'm thinking that's going to be around $150,000. Uh, my budget right now is about 275000 Right, and, and it's a it's a really, uh, in terms of facilities, it's a sweet deal right now because I pay a very small amount of rent, but I pay a small amount for a, a facility that doesn't suit our needs. So. Yes, I know that you um, taken some trips to see other buildings in the architect have done. Some of us have Is there a chance you could give us the names of towns that you can afford that we can go and get? Absolutely. Um, did you want me to give them to you now? Yep. 
Okay, so the two most recent buildings that are very similar to the one that we're proposing to build here um, is North Andover and Wilbraham. So those, um, and like I said, he's built, I think, 25 or 30 build of the senior centers here in Massachusetts and been involved in the feasibility studies of, I think, almost 60. Don't quote me on exactly those numbers. Um, but his two most recent builds are, are those two, and they are the two that are most similar. Um, they Each one of them is bigger, uh, actually, but I think both of them are bigger. Um, but they have similar features in, in them. And we did take a, a van of seniors out there to look at um, North Andover one time and would be happy to coordinate another um, community trip if people wanted to. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Ellen, one more. And then I think we've got some people online too. I'm on the board. And I have been talking to senior, other senior center executive directors, many that have built within the last five years. And asking, and partly it was uh, references for the people who apply as architects. But one of the questions I asked all of these senior center directors was, if you, is there something you would do now that you're open? Is there something that you would do differently than what you did? And every single one of them said I would have made it bigger. Yeah. Because yeah. they had so many more people who have come since they built it. Uh, was it Wilbraham said that so she's like, well, last Tuesday we had 300 people here, you know, and it wasn't a special event. Right? It's just that people are really using it, and um, so I know people look at it now and think this is, looks pretty big for what we need here. But we're not building something for the next five years. We're building something for 30, 40 years, and as uh, Katie said. The number of seniors is not is going to do. It's just going to keep growing and growing until 26. So I, I just want people to keep that in mind and look at it and feel like, oh, I don't need anything. Great. So um, for, for anyone who couldn't hear that here in the room, or for people who are online, I think that are relying on my microphone. Um, Ellen has polled as part of the committee um, the senior centers that have opened in the last 10 years um, to get um, information from them. And she asked them if there was anything that they would have done differently. And they all said we would have built it bigger um, because of the dramatic increase, the two and three times um, level of participation that people have experienced once they've opened a, a building. So. Um, that's that's a great point. Is that um, it's not being built just for the current users, but for the anticipated increase in users once we open, as well as um, like in that first slide I showed you the um, dramatically increasing number of seniors in town over time. So that's a great question. All right. So I think I want to go. Um, there's some people who are online who've been waiting patiently. Um, someone commented, uh, "Would it? I think this is Ruth. Would it not? Would it? Would it not be less expensive to put upstairs bathrooms in the same place as downstairs?" Uh, I think we discussed that already. Um, and then, is there going to be a cellar foundation? Um, it will be built on a slab. There will be no basement. Hopefully, that answers your question. Um, and then, uh, Pauline, I think you had your hand up. Uh, Pauline, I think you're muted. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. Maybe it's Pauline. Did you just recognize me because the theme came in and out? Uh, yes, I did. Yep. Go ahead. Basically, just two questions. Um, based on my, may I speak? Yes, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's cutting in and out. And it's just a day, but it's been a very good broadcast from the Great Wall. I'm absolutely impressed. Um, it looks like you have about 50 people, give or take. I haven't counted yet. Hello? Uh, I think it's closer to 40, but yes, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't have that, but that's all right. Um, my question, my important question deals more with the slide 
as well. Who is speaking, please? It's Katie. Here, I'll put it in the chat for you. All right. I'm sorry if it's not for you to do it. I'll fix that and I'll deal with it later. My concern is, or my question is more to what interest rate are you using? Because when we approved the school building fund nearly 20 years ago, at I forget what interest rate are well. Sure. So that is based on a calculation by Barbara Tierney, our town treasurer, um, and she worked with the, am I going to get the name around, the bond councilman that the town, um, the professional that the town utilizes um, as well. So um, I can inquire with her exactly what the interest rate was, but I do know that that was um, an official estimation. So um, that's a good follow-up question, and I will let you know what I find out. Again, Garfield and I apologize and fair enough, I got most of that. Of these documents at the bottom of that, the security calculated these bond um, purchases available for public view? They're not at the moment, but I can get them online. I don't know. Is that yes or no? It's, it's a suit. Yes, it's a suit. I just want to say thank you to everyone then for coming out. If you have individual questions, um, I'll be around as, as is the rest of the, the building committee. Um, please, there's so much food left back there. Take some snacks as you go. Um, and um, if you would like any more information, let me see if I can, um, if I can click us to the end of this presentation quickly. Um, you're welcome to, there we go. Um, you can look at the uh, website that has um, meeting by meeting of the building committee has all of the documents, agendas, and minutes. So thank you so much for coming, everyone. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't ask the question. I didn't ask the end question. Can I get a quick, a quick show of hands? You're allowed to change. This is not binding. You're allowed to change your mind. But for the sake of public input, how many people would be likely to vote yes at a town meeting for this? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. That's very helpful. I really appreciate your input. Um, you've given us a lot to work on.